All right, now we're going to do that um, solder repair on this power supply board and get it back up and running. A um, couple things you'll need for that. Uh, you'll need the capacitor kit with the values that we're going to be replacing that is available on our website. Um, you'll also need desolder wick to remove the solder off the old capacitors, new lead-free solder. Uh, it helps to have a pair of diagonal cutters to cut the leads of the old capacitors and the new capacitors off. And then, of course, you'll need a soldering iron to do the solder work. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the old capacitors off of the board. Um, the easiest way to do that is if you turn the board over, you'll see the little connections where the capacitor leads come through the board. If you heat one side and with your finger on the other side of the board, kind of tilt the capacitor up and then it pulls that leg through the board after the solder melts. Then you go to the next side and just kind of work its way through until that you, you can remove the capacitor off of the other side. I say you just you know, work one leg at a time until it works free. And there we have the old capacitor off the board. And we're going to do that with all of the ones we're going to be replacing. that one. Now once you get the capacitors off of the board, it helps if you add a little bit of solder to the pads before you use the solder wick and clean them up. Now what you'll do is you'll take the desolder wick, put it on top of one of the little solder con uh, connections where you just removed the part from, and then heat it up with a desolder or with the soldering iron, heat up the desolder wick, and what it's going to do is absorb the solder into the copper braid and it leaves you with a nice clean mounting hole to put the new capacitor in through. Now when doing these type of repairs you do need to make sure that you use the proper parts for the repair. Um, you now you can look on the sides of the capacitors. Um, they're going to have the voltage and capacitance ratings on them, but that's not the only thing that you need to worry about. You also need to make sure that you're getting uh, the proper series and rating of capacitors. Uh, they have a temperature rating. Uh, you need to make sure that you get the ones that are 105 degrees Celsius rating. You also want to make sure that you're using low ESR and high ripple current capacitors. Um, these are high speed switching power supplies. If you use the wrong type, it can damage the other components on the power supply board so that you can, you know, doing a repair with the wrong parts will actually cause more problem than what you originally had. Um, so to help you out, uh, we've already assembled the kits on our site with the correct parts the correct ratings and so forth so you can just pick you up a kit to repair your monitor and not have to worry about getting the right sizes, you know, physical size or the right uh, ratings on the capacitors. We've already done that work for you. Um, okay, now we have our new capacitors. If you notice on the board where we remove the old ones, there's little circles. One side is shaded, one side is not. The shaded side of the circles is the negative side that you put the negative lead of the capacitor in. And on the capacitor, you have a gray stripe on one side. That is the negative terminal. So you just want to make sure that you put the negative terminal lead through the hole that's the negative hole when you're installing the new capacitors. If you don't, when you power up the board, it will short out the capacitor, uh, leave a big puff of smoke, and then you'll have to start all over again with your repair. So you do want to make sure that you get them properly polarized when you're putting the new capacitors on the board. Okay, so we've done those two. We're just going to move over to the other four capacitors that we're going to be repairing or replacing for this repair. And do the same procedure. You just heat up the leg, pull it through, heat up the other leg, pull it through. Heat up this one. Pull it through. 
The larger capacitors are actually easier because you can grab a hold of them, a hold of them better to pull the legs through. Alright, now we've removed the old capacitors. Again, we're going to put just a little bit of solder. The reason we're doing that is when you remove the capacitors off of the board, a lot of times there's no solder on the outside of the connection. It's all in the little hole that goes from one side to the other side of the board. And the soldering iron and desolder wick can't grab a hold of it very well. If you put a little bit of solder on the top of it, it makes a little mound so that when the soldering iron melts it, it melts that and all the way down through the little hole that we made or that you know, was made on the board and just allows the solder to you know, leave a nice cleaner hole. And these are pretty good monitors. It's definitely worth, you know, a little bit of time to get them fixed. Um, once you get the kits with the, the repair parts in hand, you know, it should take you 20 minutes maybe to, to do a repair on one of these monitors. And then it should be pretty much good as a brand new one that came off the factory floor. Well worth the you know, 15, 20 minutes that it takes to do the repair on them. And that one left a little bit of solder on the other end of the hole so just applied a little bit more new solder so that when it heats you see it, it goes down and melts that other solder on the opposite end and it still wants to be a problem so we're going to just turn it over and attack it from this side there we go now we have a nice clean mounting hole. Okay, and once again, you know, make sure that your stripe goes to the rock, the proper side. And what we're doing is just, like I say, just inserting them. And for now, we're just folding the legs over on the opposite side of the board so that it holds the capacitors on while we're populating it. Now that we have all our capacitors repopulated on the board that we need to, we'll just go around and solder them in place and complete that repair. And so for that, you just touch the soldering iron to the connection, let it heat up, and then apply a little bit of a solder. And it should liquefy the solder and flow around the connection, make a nice shiny new solder joint. then remove the, the um, solder first, then remove the soldering iron. Alright, we have all the solder connections, then you just use your diagonal cutters and cut off these remaining legs that are sticking through the board.
and there you have a rebuilt power supply. Now we can take it back over to the monitor and reassemble it and test it out and make sure that we're ready to go.